Is let's go to uh, Marie in Anchorage. What's up, Marie? How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm so from um, separation H to <laughs> <laughs> yes. To my question to Marie. Yes, and listen. This is probably one of those moments when you were like, I was going to tell my friends I was on the show, and then the lead-in is talking about hemorrhoids and how angry I get at <laughs> Facebook and Instagram. So sorry about that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause, and now you can just cut okay. it and hand it directly to them from there. And that way you'll miss all oh, of perfect. the weird stuff where I talk about my body. All right, so how's it going? Perfect. It's going good. Um, my question is, I have a son that is dealing with bullying at school and he seems to be super unhappy and he's kind of a pessimistic personality. He's a twin. He's, um, kind of always been that way a little bit. Okay. And I'm not sure as a parent, how do you balance like, I want to, I mean, they talk to me more than any other. I have three older kids too that are grown and these boys talk to me. I mean, I'm so blessed, but, um, you know, hearing what they're saying, it's like, I want to validate their feelings. I want to listen. I want to take it seriously. But at the same time, life is super hard. Is it normal stuff mm. that I'm dealing with? Do I toughen him up? You know, how do I balance all of that? Because he is my baby. Things are harder for him than his twin. Mm -hmm. Academically, socially, it's hard for him to express himself. And, um, you know, now he's not trying in school at all. And he's suffering and he's telling me about it. And I just don't know. I need real things to do. I need real things that will help. Do I take him in and try medication? We tried it when he was younger. Do I take him out of school, put him in a new school? You know, do I? I don't know. I'm lost. Mm. First, man, that's so hard. That's heartbreaking because you love that little boy, right? He is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I hate that for him. He's I hate that for talented you. talented yeah. beyond belief. He what's, could maybe what, be he on the spectrum in? with things. He, what's, um, he is musically talented. Hmm. He can drum like no other. Hmm. Um he has a comedic humor that is far beyond his peers, so I don't think they understand him. A room full of adults would be in stitches. <laughs> but I just <sighs> think that he's 14, and he's, you know, he things are super, like I said, they're super hard for him, and he has a twin brother that everything's easy for. Hmm. And uh, so, so being compared... He, he not only, yeah, he not only has the acute feelings of people picking on him and giving him crap or realizing I got a funny joke here and nobody gets how funny this is or yeah. I'm drumming on stuff and the teacher's always hollering at him to be still and quit moving and this and that. But he also has a picture yeah. of himself in another body doing everything right. Right. Ugh, They're not man. identical. They don't look anything alike. So that helps. Okay. Okay. So it's just his weird, ugly brother. That's fine. <laughs> That's totally different. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So great questions and really something that Parents all over have been wrestling with for a long time. Do I just, but life is hard and we let's let them get toughened up. If I run in there and rescue them for everything, I'm actually stealing from them in the future, from their future selves. Um, I'm preventing them from learning how to solve problems, how to, how to get resources, etc. And bullying's changed over the last 20 years. There's a, there's a, digital component to it, cyberbullying, right? That these things that our brains have mechanisms. Well, I want to talk about that too. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, kids have gotten mean in a way that they've always been mean. Kids have always been ugly and mean, but it has changed. The stuff I dealt with as yeah. a kid was brutal, and the stuff I saw my students deal with for us 20 years is another level. It is brutal. Yeah. And I think lack of civility from parents, change in entertainment has shifted. There's just everything's yeah. just – laid on top of each other and whoa um, loss of consequences when I was a kid if you mouthed off to the wrong guy you got hit in the mouth there was a natural consequence yeah. and I'm not saying that's great but it was a leveling effect we all knew you do this this could be a result that's gone now and if you hit somebody you yeah. go to jail and so there's just this consequence free environment and there's just some kids who are just paying the price for it so here's here's yeah. the litmus test for me and I will tell you, this is hard for me because I messed this up with my own kid. 
and I won't go into too much detail, but I didn't do it the right way. Um, I didn't listen to him and I missed some things and, um, I just have to live with that and I got to forgive myself and then do better next time. And, um, which is good, but I didn't listen. So the difference is kids say mean stuff. That's life. Kids push on each other and get in each other's faces and say things. That's, that's life. So right. there's a difference between kids who are mean and kids experiencing mean things or uncomfortable things and right. bullying. So right. the definition of bullying is a couple of things, aggressive, repetitive, mm-hmm. intentional, and power dynamic. Okay. So is your kid constantly drumming in class on things and the kid next to him says, hey, spaz, hey, maniac, quit. Right. That's that in my mind is not bullying. See that I try to get to the bottom of that and when he when we do sometimes I'm like, uh, you know, I think that's like, like not, not not that bad. But you're thinking it. I'm, oh, I'm going to tell him these things, right? Uh, I want to tell yeah. you that exact like, same thing. Were you being in the way? Exactly. There you go. Or is there a gr- a guy, a kid, a, a young lady, is there a group who seek your son out to prop themselves up? That they okay. f- they seek him out to diminish him, to make fun of him, to mock him, and they send him text messages or Snapchats that reinforce that he's less than, that he's dumb, and it's pervasive. It goes on and on and on. So when somebody's mean, you can avoid them. You walk away. Or if somebody does a thing, they snap at you and say something like, you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're always moving around. That's annoying. It's not bullying. Mm -hmm. It's the pervasive, aggressive, repetitive. They are seeking my kid out. So that's number one. Number two is have you involved school support network yet? Mm -hmm. So have you called teacher and said, hey, my son is telling me these things. What are you seeing? Yes. And they, they were unaware of that. Of course, they wanted names. And I... Personally, like when I'm talking about certain kids that do these things, I mean, I've known these kids forever and I know their parents and I like to me, it hasn't been bad enough to say anything because I just I don't want them to go, you know, get the wrath of their parents like you. I can't believe you said that to another child when they're 14 and they all say really stupid things all the time. Like my kids do it. Everybody does it. They do, but you and I, what's just stupid and roll your eyes and dumb, you and I have 15 or 20 years worth of wisdom and Teflon, and our little ones don't. And so if you put yourself in their position as a parent, and if you got a call that said your son was saying this to some young little girl in her class, some 14-year-old little girl in her class, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or to a 14-year-old little boy in your class, and your yeah. blood would boil, make that phone call. Yeah. Say, hey, can we, I'm struggling. I want my, you know, we've known each other for a long time and have that conversation. I would start with the school. In my situation, I did. I started with the school and I didn't see it clearly enough that what my son was trying to communicate to me, and we had him in some fancy pants, highfalutin, nonsensical private school and now he's at a public school loving 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 life and that's not a statement on public schools or private schools i just thought that because it's fancy it's going to be perfect and it was a disaster for him they let him know you don't belong here both implicitly and explicitly both the teachers and the students and so i didn't listen I kept trying to drill down into the instances, but what did this kid say that one time? And what I didn't, my 10 year old or nine year old or seven year old didn't have was the ability to articulate. I don't belong there, man. And every time I go, I, I am, I'm not okay. And I didn't have that language. And so we stayed another year and we shouldn't have. And then we got him into a new environment and it made all the difference. If you think your kid might be on the spectrum, you mentioned that. What makes you think that? Um, he just is, I mean, we've had school testing done. I've mm-hmm. never, um, had 
I, I mean, I haven't taken him to a bigger city and done extensive, but um, he's kind of a uh, enigma. Like they don't really, <laughs> he's kind of all over the place. He has like, he's, he just tests super high in some things and just way below prof- proficiency in others. Mm. And he's, I mean, he's just, I, I wish you could meet him. <laughs> he sounds amazing. He sounds incredible. He he is, but uh, communicating how he feels and stuff is not something that's easy. When I have a conversation with him and I love him to pieces, it's super frustrating. I mean, it's like, I don't, my you know, my other son is like, easy for me to talk to and I have sure. one that's hard and and even though I'm listening to him so and here, feeling for him. I want you to try crazy. this. It may not work, but I have had some moms reach out to me and it just happens to be moms who've reached out and said they won the lottery with this one. I want you to get a notebook that y'all share and he owes you a, either a written response, a story about the day or a picture or a poem or something every day and you will respond. Oh my gosh. See, this is why I called. I want real homework. So get a, it can be, if I'm you, I would overpay for something. I would go to the store and get some leather bound non, like some highfalutin something or other, make it all kumbaya and special. Um, and I would say okay. this is for just for me and you. And okay. you write in there one, two, and three, what were some hard things about today? And one, two, and three, what were some good things about today? Okay. And I want him, to, I want you to begin to focus on this can happen at bedtime. This can happen at dinner time. Dinner time is really great because it's hard to hide there. No electronics mm-hmm. at the dinner table, no headphones, no disappearing. And everyone's going to go around the table and say, here's, here's the B&Ws. What was the best and worst parts of the day? What's the goods and the bads? And there's all mm-hmm. kinds of different words for that. But here's what we want to do. I want us to begin to verbalize in our house. We look for beauty and we find it even when things are hard. And you have to model that. Dad has to model that. If he's around, um, brother has to model that. Everybody's got to model it. And often that pessimism is absorbed somewhere. And it may be because there's no sunshine months at a time. It may be, (laughs) I don't know. Is is he getting that somewhere? Um, Well, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> I think he lives the same life that everyone else does in the house. I know you're laughing. Well, just I think the way you said, like, well. His dad and I are very uh, I can sort of people. So I don't know. We just do, 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 do. Mm. So I don't know. I don't I don't know if he just another way that he doesn't fit in. Because I remember when he was little, I was like, you know, Oscar, oops, I said his name. Sometimes you have to choose to be happy. Like, it just. Like you, it's a choice. You just have to be like, I'm not going to let this get me down. And he's like, I try to tell myself to be happy. It All doesn't right. work. So let's change, change the language, change the language. Cause I think that when you tell somebody and I, I've done this too a bajillion times, you can choose to be happy. I don't think that's true anymore. I do think okay. you can choose the things to do the things that help you become happy. That, so what I mean by that is I don't, I can't sit at home and say, be happy, you idiot, because I won't. Right, right. But I can right. get up and go outside and go for a walk and write in my gratitude yeah. journal and write my grandma a note, even though she passed away several years ago. I can draw my, write a, my five-year-old daughter is obsessed with getting letters from me, and it's amazing. It's so great. I can write her a letter. <laughs> I can do those things that I know on the back end. I can eat well. I can go garden for a while, whatever the thing is. I can do the things yeah. that I know are going to pay off, but those are a physiological response. I can go play my guitar. I can go do those things. It's not forcing myself into a set of feelings. Right. And so what I would love yep. to see y'all do is to begin to back away from that language. You should be feeling like this. And sometimes you just got to do these things if you, even if you don't feel like it because you will on the back end. Yep. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. 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 So, and we have those conversations too. Um, awesome. We do all the time. Yep. And remember, a 14-year-old is going to not listen to you. He's going to watch you. Yes. And he's not going to listen to dad. He's going to watch everybody. And yep. in a culture that you guys are in of do, 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 dropping somebody in who feel, feel, feels is hard. Mm-hmm. And so if you model, no, I feel that, and it's hard, and it stinks, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And you model, mm-hmm. and then we go do, both and then that's the gift to him. But I do think it's worth starting with a school counselor, 
starting with a teacher okay. and setting up a meeting, and you will get a sense very quickly, this teacher doesn't care about my kid. You'll get a yeah. sense very quickly, uh, this teacher wants to jump in and solve this, and that's not what you're asking for. Mm-hmm. Will you just keep an eye out on my kid? And if we get to a place where you are reading this day to daily journal back and forth, and by the way, if he doesn't write in this thing, even if he's being obnoxious and <laughs> being a 14-year-old, I love 14-year-olds. They're so great. They're hilarious and obnoxious and so sarcastic. I just love them. And he won't write in it, then he loses privilege. I mean, this is part of opting into your home, that we all participate in this. We all communicate with one another. And I'm giving you a new avenue. And you owe me a poem or a picture or a song or a how are you doing. You owe me three things you saw today that were beautiful. You owe me those things every day. It's part of our, it's part of our ongoing dialogue in our home. Um, if you see those things beginning to dip down or heaven forbid you, he starts talking about, I don't think I should be here. I don't want to be here. Self-harm kind of stuff. Then you, you flip on the lights and sound the alarms, but let's work on the communication stuff. So let's come up with a new way to communicate with one another. And it could be that y'all just write hilarious poems back and forth, or you write letters to each other back, whatever that looks like. And Let's talk about not forcing, not choosing to feel a certain way, but let's choose to do the things that are going to lead us to feeling okay. Great, great, great question, Marie. You're awesome. He's lucky to have you. Um, That little boy won the lottery with having you as his mama. And don't hesitate. If it's pervasive, aggressive, intentional over and over, call parents. Call school. um, Take it from somebody who didn't. And I wish I had of. 